Pas de pierre. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our studio. Today we have a very special guest here at the Guangzhou Expat. She was born in South Korea, grew up in the US and then moved to Guangzhou in 2013. So you're really a person to know to be everywhere. <laughs> I feel everyone knows you oh, no. <laughs> or at least about you, like knows your name, knows your brand. <laughs> you. I don't think we really know like how you came to Guangzhou and mm -hmm. how did you kind of set up your career here. Okay. So I'm really happy that you're here today, Kara Schroeder. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to be here and thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. So, uh, I hope to teach some newcomers some things about Guangzhou. So. Well, definitely. You have so much to share. So just to get you know, and you know, get acquainted with you. If there's still someone out there who doesn't know you, <laughs> there's plenty. <laughs> well, maybe a couple. So what are kind of the three things we should know about you? Um, well, like you said, I was born in Korea, um, and then I was adopted by a, an American family wow. um, in Minnesota, USA, and I grew up there. And then, yeah, I'm in my later 30s, I decided it was time to move to China. Well, I was invited to move to China. Nice. And I did, and you know, I came here with not even a job. Wow, so, that's quite the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I didn't even have a job. It was just kind of like a leap of faith, and I did it. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. So I really wanted to show you something. Okay. So we're gonna add this to the video as well. So here, we first have a, you know, what is this? This is the Guangzhou Metro with very few lines. Very <laughs> few lines, exactly. So this is from 2010. Yes, okay. So now when I came to Guangzhou, so they, okay. you know, the line wasn't even connected to the airport just yet. Right. And then, you know, just three years later, this is what the metro map looked like. And it's still not as big as it what, what it is now. What is now, exactly. Yes. So what... Why are we looking at this metro map? What does this have to do with your story? Okay, well, uh, so I arrived here in August 31st of 2013. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came here actually for a relationship. So oh. I had a boyfriend and we hadn't been together long and he got a job in Guangzhou and said, I'm moving to Guangzhou. He moved here and then a couple months later he said, do you want to move to China? And I said, okay. I guess so. And the next day I sold my car and I wow. sold pretty much everything I had. And two weeks later I got on a plane and I came to China, unemployed. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, before I came here I had managed an IT company and mm -hmm. I had worked in finance. And he had said to me, well the only job you're ever going to get is to teach English. And well, I didn't want to teach English. That's not, I don't have the patience. I don't have, I mean, it's a very noble profession that I just, it's not for me. Yeah, it's not <laughs> what you want to do. Right. It's not your passion. So I came here and um, it turned out for his job, he ended up traveling all the time. So I was pretty much here by myself for the first mm -hmm. five to six weeks. So the Metro. Yes, <laughs> now we get to that. Yes, yeah, so what happened with the Metro is um, every day I would force myself to get on the Metro mm -hmm. and go to a different stop each day and explore the surroundings and just randomly talk to people. Oh, wow. And which actually helped me kind of find my first job in, in Guangzhou. But um, yeah, the Metro was a good way for me to explore Guangzhou and to discover um, the culture, uh, the food. Um, different places to go um, and I would keep a book and I would write everything down. Do you still have that book? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we should find that book. I know, you know, I've moved a few times so it could have gotten lost somewhere but I could maybe find it if I dug a little bit. You know, go back to, you know, all your stuff, you know. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> So I thought it was quite funny, you know, you came here, you know, with your boyfriend at the time. Yes. Well, I came in 2010, 2010 to get away from my ex-boyfriend. Okay. Yes. We so, always you know, up there's always, different... you know, something related yes. to people, right? Very mm -hmm. interesting stories all the time. <laughs> yes. So, you know, you started exploring the city in Guangzhou. What happened then? You didn't have a job at the time, it was just exploring places. <laughs> Where did you go next? 
Well, you know, I, I did end up um, doing a couple of odd teaching jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I, I taught like a two-year-old who ended up peeing on my foot and punching me in the face. Ouch! And, and I taught at an art school for dancers who had, you know, no interest in learning any English. So it was very difficult for me and I got lucky in that I met a guy who was the manager of a restaurant, which is now closed, called Richie Creative Eats. Oh, yes. I and he, yes, and he invited me to a dinner party, and I met some other people, and one of the people I met was um, the editor of City Weekend, mm. which is also now dead. But anyway, she, um, it was her job kind of to know what was going on in the city, write articles about different restaurants and hotels and things like that, and she wanted out. And she wanted to go into fashion, which was her passion. Okay. And so um, I just took it over after writing a few freelance articles for her. And that's, again, you know, a great way that I got to know the city was because now it's my job to write reviews of these places and to inform people of these places. And also it really expanded my network, which helped a lot, too. So yeah, you went through, you know, coming to Guangzhou with no job, then, you know, finding yourself new connections, you know, your new career. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we then fast forward to, you know, a few years back, mm -hmm. I suddenly on my WeChat and everywhere, all WeChat groups, I started to hear about a monkey. And I'm like... <laughs> A blue one? And what is this about? <laughs> like, everyone was saying, you should add this monkey. And I'm like, who the hell is this monkey? <laughs> Like, why should I add him? <laughs> Who is he? What is he going to do? So can you tell me, you know, what's the monkey? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, during my time in China, I've had a few different um, careers. Mm -hmm. So I did. I was a TV host for Insider TV. Mm -hmm. I handled their sales. I also was the international marketing director for Revolution Cocktail. Um, but one of the things that I ended up doing that I was very passionate about was the Amazing app, which was a food delivery app that was Chinese, but they had an English version. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to work for this company because it was growing really fast. Um, unfortunately, it was acquired by another company in Beijing. Uh, I see. And so when they shut that app down, I had to kind of rethink what my purpose in China was. Mm -hmm. So one of the founders, um, who's also a foreigner, he's Dutch, he, you know, I'd, I'd come up with some ideas of what I wanted to do with Mazing, but we couldn't do them without the approval of the Chinese partners. And they didn't mm. see the purpose of some of my ideas because they didn't understand the foreign market. One of the things that I had wished that I had when I'd come to Guangzhou was something to tell me exactly what's available for foreigners that's yes. easy to obtain um, where it, I needed very little English. So I came up with the idea for Bunga Monkey, along with my partner, mm -hmm. to provide foreigners, whether they've been living here for a long time, or they've just arrived, or they're traveling to Guangzhou and Shenzhen, a way to find things easily, quickly, and be able to get there. Um, so we also write articles, I think, that are very helpful, like where to get yeah. good pizza not just Pizza Hut and not just, you know, I don't know what else there is for Pizza Hut. <laughs> exactly. But like quality Where to go for a swim when yes. it's getting really hot. Yeah, I mean, with the with the um, COVID-19, mm -hmm. a lot of the pools aren't going to be opening. Yeah. So what alternatives do we have to go swim and enjoy nature and cool off? So I came up with an article on where to find swimming holes around um, Guangzhou and, and Shenzhen. Um, but but even basic things that I see in group chats in um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I follow the group chats and I see the kinds of questions people ask. And so it's I often the same type of questions, yeah, right? Yeah. Where do you get a good burger? Where do you, do you get pizza? Where can I get my shoes repaired? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know any English speaking hairdressers? Anything like that you can find on Bunga Monkey. You can find it easy, easily easily. Um, there's information about, you know, the hours they're open, their phone number, there's a map, there's a taxi card, there's photos. Um, and so, yeah, we just wanted to make living in Guangzhou and Shenzhen easier for anybody. But, but going along with the people that have lived here for years, even people who have lived here as long as you have, yeah. it also is able to introduce you to places you've never heard of. Yeah, there's tons of things, you know, I've never, oh wow, there's this kind of place. And when I think back, you know, when I came to Guangzhou in 2010, 
there was no such thing, you know, you could mm. find information from like where to go, you know, what to eat. I remember we tried to, you know, go to this one, you know, Italian restaurant. It took us like an hour to find that place because we didn't have a proper address. Right. Now, you know, you know, so as you know, the taxi card, you know, get us there. Right. But I'm a little bit curious on like, why the monkey? Where did that okay. come from? <laughs> well, um, so Bunga in Indonesian means flower. Oh. And Guangzhou is the city of flowers. Yeah. And so the monkey, what I wanted to do was create something that made people feel like they had somebody to trust. Now I know that. Now I understand. And somebody they could contact if they needed to, um, somebody they could rely on. It's memorable, it's easy. Yes. I know in Italian, bunga bunga means something completely different. But <laughs> I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> but, but it's just something that I think that it's easy to remember. I think the colors that we use for the logo really pop out. Yeah. Um, we put a lot of thought into the colors, the design, um, even the font. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I wanted it to be some, like their little buddy that they could trust in the city. Well, definitely character, a logo that, you know, I feel so many people here can recognize. Yeah. And I already see that happening, you know, on research groups or Facebook, someone asking, you know, where should could I go for like a birthday dinner? And you wait a few seconds, someone's going to send up, just look at a bunga monkey. <laughs> like, why are you asking us? You know, just go there, you're going to find it over there. Yeah. So it definitely is That's working. That's good. That's good. <laughs> because yeah. we really, everything has been very word of mouth. So it's good that people find it useful because well, that's what we wanted. Definitely. To be. I even remember once myself asking in a WeChat group, you know, where to go for a brunch. And I think it was one friend like Molly, who is not in Guangzhou, and I was like, why don't you just say Bunga Monkey? <laughs> there is an article about exactly, brunch. Exactly, exactly. You know, and there it is, you know, we you know where else should I, you know, go to yeah. find this kind of information. <laughs> So, like, I find your story so inspiring because I feel a lot of people go into a new place, especially you said your boyfriend at the time was traveling a lot, so mm -hmm. you're kind of on your own in a new place. Yeah. And it can be quite scary for someone, you know, mm -hmm. trying to go out there and find new places. Yeah. So, if someone is really new to the city or coming here for, you know, to travel or thinking of staying here for a longer time, do you have you know, any tips you could give those people? How could mm -hmm. they make the most of their stay here? Um, first of all, definitely keep an open mind. Mm. I think that's very important because you see things here where you think that they're not acceptable, but he, it's a different culture. Yeah. And so what's not acceptable for you in your mind doesn't mean it's not acceptable in another country. And, and I think also be, be very open to meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I don't mean like become an alcoholic and spend every night out drinking. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, don't do that. Because that's actually not even necessary. Um, I mean, if you just go to some events and try to meet people mm -hmm. and, you know, um, listen to their stories, you oftentimes find you have something in common. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really important is just meet as many people as you can and then you can pick and choose who you want to be friends mm -hmm. with. I think that's important. I would also recommend something that I haven't done, which is to learn the language. Um, so what about that? <laughs> yes. And I will say that, um, I mean, obviously things would be easier if I learned the language. Um, but for me, because I've always worked in, an, in industries that are catered to foreigners, mm -hmm. I've never had really the desire to learn um and it's not that i wouldn't be i i did take a couple of chinese lessons not by you but um <laughs> and i found that it's it's almost like trying to speak fr from birth again yeah. and um i'm so busy that i just haven't put time aside to be able to learn definitely because you know, i see you doing all of these things yeah. i don't know even how you had the time to come over here today well, i mean because bunga monkey is not my only project but right now because of the pandemic certain things are put on hold yeah. and so i have a little bit of time now which i probably should have taken to learn the language but um, <laughs> well i'm happy you chose to be here <laughs> and i really want to say to everyone like you know coming from a chinese teacher if you come to the city and you can learn the language great mm -hmm. but i also don't want to scare anyone because the level of english have really risen in guangzhou you know the past 10 years we've been yes. here 
and especially in the city center you can definitely live your life without the Chinese as well so you don't have to be worried or scared about that yeah you'll do just fine it's just you know if you later you know have the time when to take the, you know deep dive a little bit deeper then you can learn the language but there's no nothing to you know to be afraid of I think the benefits of learning the language aren't though necessarily for Guangzhou but many people want to travel around China because there's so many beautiful places to see in China yeah. that knowing the language would be very helpful when you're going to other places that foreigners aren't as common. Yeah, exactly. So, you, you leave Guangzhou and yes. Zhejiang New Town, you yes. might need a I little need, bit more. Yeah, I, obviously, I mean, I built my company based on people not speaking the language. Um, so I, I want people to use it, but I also found that a lot of Chinese people use Bunga Monkey yeah. because they trust it and, you know, their their um, local platforms are not very reliable mm -hmm. as well. So um, I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from locals using Bunga Monkey, which yeah, is great. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I bet a lot of locals also want to know, you know, where's the international crowd, you know, yeah. hanging around. You because know. people are becoming more and more open-minded. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so, you know, inspiring and exciting, you know, and so many things, you know, people coming new to come here. You know, of course, you know, get Bunga Monkey and, you know, get searching, check the metro, you know, just pop up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's out here? You know, just talking to people. Yeah. Like, I really love your tips and everything, you know, you shared with us. Thank you. But there's one more thing I want to do before okay. you go. Okay. Are so let's play, play a your little game. <laughs> let's play a little game, shall okay. we? Here we go. So let me explain <laughs> the rules first. Okay. So I'm going to say a few Guangzhou related words to you. And as soon as you hear the word, the water. Say, yeah, take some water, exactly. You want to be ready for this because you need to be fast. Yes, okay. So the first thing that comes to your mind, whatever yes. it is, just blurt it out. Okay. Whatever it Ooh. is. You know, you know, if a bad word comes out, we just peep it later. Okay. So don't worry about that. <laughs> That's pretty common for me. <laughs> okay, so let's get started then. Okay, first one. Jujia New Town. Uh, skyscrapers. Cantonese. Uh, dim sum. Party Pier. Uh, <laughs> happening that they swim across no, the No, I know, river. I know, and I don't know how they don't end up with like pink eye and everything else. So you're not the first person to sign up for that? No, no. <laughs> Maybe the monkey will do it. Oh no, oh god no. Can you imagine <laughs> swimming in that thing? <laughs> not really, not really. Okay, a few more. Okay. Expats. Uh, varied, diverse, <laughs> very diverse. Krampuhasa. Uh, helipad. <laughs> Monkey. Bunga. Excellent. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Kara, for yeah. coming into the thank show you. today. Thank you for having me. I really had a lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> me too as well. So if you want to know more about Kara and Bunga Monkey, we're going to put some links and information down here so you can you know, contact her, contact the monkey and find out the best places to, you know, to see Guangzhou, eat in Guangzhou, have fun in Guangzhou, all of that. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you next week. See you. Bye for now. Bye.